Hey friends, this is Rob Paisola, the CEO and President of Western Capital. I have to tell you, if you have not heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is absolutely the easiest way to make a podcast. Look, we know the easy ways. With everything, all you need in one place, let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. We appreciate the time you're taking to listen to our podcast. Thank you. And take advantage of something that's free. Jump on anchor.fm right now and get started broadcasting your voice around the world. God bless, my friends. You're now listening to the world famous Change Your Mind. Change Your Mind. Change Your Life. Change Your Life. Podcast. Broadcasting worldwide with your host, Robert Paisola. Ladies and gentlemen, give way for Robert Paisola. Broadcasting on 107.1 on the Man Cave Podcasting Network and beaming worldwide on the SpectaVision Satellite Radio Network live from Las Vegas. Today's episode is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, featuring sleek luxury and pure elegance. Visit your local Mercedes-Benz dealer today and take advantage of exceptional deals for 2022. Bringing you the top news and guests from around the globe on finance, credit, life, or just how to fix that dent in your pocketbook from COVID-19. It's Robert Paisola. How do you make a radio ad for an 8K TV that conveys the feeling of 33 million pixels with over a billion shades of color hitting your eyeballs? This is the best we can do. Samsung Neo QLED 8K. Unreasonably good. Your plans? Today it's dinner with the parents at your spot. We gotta come back here. Now, their spot. Or you're on the edge of your seat at the game. Come on, just one time! And it's the one. Or maybe you're catching the next flight to... Now boarding flight 1850. Oh, that's you. The choice is yours. And when you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it deal with people's problems and people's issues that they don't really know how to handle. Now, a lot of times people were taught, hey, I have a problem and I'm just going to go to an attorney. Well, that, that sometimes works, doesn't it? But a lot of times it's not that simple. So we, we, we hit the things that nobody else wants to talk about, and that's our specialty. Can I get some examples of what y'all talk about? Ah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Is, yep. is, every, is everybody in the fan band, can you hear us? Oh, you're you're. I'm on I'm on a studio mic right now. You're you're trans. We're transmitting live out of Honolulu, Hawaii, through our. Oh, studio. this is dope. Yeah, we're through our through our studios in Los Angeles. In Let's Hawaii. go, Fabian. Yeah, there we go. We're we're live, guys. We're good. Uh, Derek, uh, let me know when the and I'll be back. Go ahead, my sister. Well, what was the question? I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. What type of stuff your organization talks about? We talk about the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Let's just bring one topic up right now that we've been talking about part of the day-to-day. PPP loans. During the period of time, a couple years ago, we were all told to stay home and spend three weeks at home for the country. Right? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. We sure did, didn't we? Three years later, we're still sitting here, and they finally decided that, you know what, Uh, we need to bring this down and, and, and say it's over because it's causing great financial distress to our country. So during that period of time, people had options. Number one, the option was they could sit back, roll up their sleeves, watch TV, and get really intimate with Netflix. That was an option. And get fit. That was that, that was an option. That was an option. Option number two was to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to change my life. And I'm going to go out and create something that has never been created before. And I'm going to learn about Clubhouse, learn about social audio media, learn about putting myself out in the public, and learning of ways to show people what I can do. Now, those people that made that choice are now realizing the benefits of what they can do. You see that? Isn't that awesome? 
Because the thing we learned about on club on Clubhouse and on other platforms, and there are many, many more platforms, please understand that. And when I'm talking to you today, guys, one thing I want you to understand is I'm talking to over 10,000 people. As if That's why I'm talking to you like this. This is not a normal voice that I would use when I'm, we're just chilling out. We're giving information. We're giving facts. We're giving value. We're creating something that you're not going to find in any other room. Not one time tonight will you ever hear me say, oh, uh, ask for money. That's not what we do. And you might have a reason. You might have a question. I might be able to show you why. But... The answer to your question is, you had a choice. Now that you're back at work, are you happy? Well, that is a whole no. Well, and you know what, Sophia, you are absolutely right. Because there are a lot of people who thought going to work every single day, working in the coal mine, I come from Ohio, so I'll use that analogy, was the way to do it because that's the way my parents did it and that my my dad was a doctor and so you know I I just did what he did and honored exactly, yes yeah. now and then a lot of us woke up didn't we let's all think in this room for a second we opened our eyes and we saw around us we looked to the left we looked to the right and we saw that there was a different way to live that we didn't have to follow anybody now is that right I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. And now what's happening, and this is what I believe, I believe that there's people that are back at work because they feel that they have to be, and they're now choosing to try to find a way out of the terrorism that they call work. How am I yes. doing? Yeah. That's the truth. So what we do is we figure out what is it that you want in your life? What is it that you want to do to go from 40 hours a week, but still pay your bills, paying your rent, paying your child care, paying... I mean, the mathematics certainly do not work out, guys. They, they just don't work out. If you run the numbers on base, on, a, on a $15 an hour salary, it does not work. And it's hey, sad. I, did, I don't mean to cut you off, Robert, but I, we just got a raise. I get paid 1785 And on top of the raise... Our benefits went up, <laughs> so it's like. So, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what happened? <laughs> I mean, they, they gave you a little bit more money, exactly. but your benefits. So, so where's the win-win on that one, there, my friend? Exactly. So there is no win. We make the money, you bring it home to give it back out. So the question is, what do you do? Because now your eyes have been opened. Ah, let's talk about that. Now your eyes have been opened. And as your eyes opened, you started to see what was real and what could happen. Let's have that conversation. Ah. I guarantee you one thing you saw, Derek, is you started seeing people around you making $1,000 a week, and they didn't even make that at their job prior to the COVID pandemic. True or false? Absolutely true. So what that did, guys, is that changed the baseline of what acceptance is for what value you have in the workplace. Thus, we have a serious Not problem. Not all money is good money. Not all money is good money. Okay. Uh, Derek, uh, help me out on that. I didn't quite I understand that, please. Okay. Uh, can, can, can somebody repeat that again? What happened? Okay. Okay. I, I was just. I, I was responding. There's a replay on Clubhouse, and I said, "Not all money is good money." Ah. That's all. I said. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, I'm I'm a humanitarian. I believe you should be honest, moral, ethical. Even when you make mistakes, you should should just stand up and say, "You know what? I'm here because I have something to I have something of value to to bring to people." And I don't need to take advantage of anybody. That's ethics. Ethics. Because you're right. To just to have for the man that brings in and has the most money, is he the happiest? I'll guarantee no. I'll guarantee you no. But I will tell you, my friends, this question I just asked is true. How can you look at your neighbor who's bringing a thousand dollars a month a week in a week, and then you go back to your job for seventeen dollars an hour and think that you're going to be taken care of? At the taxes, you lucky if you bring it on five hundred dollars, and I get paid every week. There you are, Sophia. And so we have our answer. 
Thus, we have a problem when it comes to hiring people because, as you guys know, I'm in Las Vegas and there is a tremendous lack of people who want to go to work. Is it because they're tired or inexperienced? No! They saw the other side. They saw the other side. And by seeing the other side, they're like, wait a second, I'm not going to just take second position anymore. I'm willing to work and do whatever it takes to get to what it is that I want. Because I did it during the period of time at which we took our three-week break. Does that resonate with anybody? Definitely. Absolutely. So the question is, what do we do? What do we do? We have people around us. We have people trying to tell us what to do. We have people saying, hey, come here, work here. But as she said, so so eloquently, I'm lucky if I have $500 at the end of the week. Now let's oh, run brother. Let's run the numbers. 500 times 4 is uh, $2,000. Rent's going to be 1400 And on top of that, what do you do? Yeah, my rent about twelve eighty something. My car paying five something. So I mean, <laughs> that's half the that's the majority of the check right there. Yeah, like, that don't count BJ and E. You know, insurance, life insurance, medical insurance, all this stuff you got to kick out just to survive and live, like the basics. Absolutely, you have to kick out so much money for food going up to get back and forth to work. Gas. Oh, like what are we doing all this for? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Or how would you? Let's talk about something that 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 this catastrophic that just happened in Florida. Look at all those great people in Florida who are on retirements, and look at what happened. Some of them didn't have insurance. Why? Because three weeks ago, the insurance companies, a lot of them, as in eighty percent of them, said we're canceling policies. So now they're without a house. They get forty-seven thousand dollars from FEMA. And they're back 25 years. What if that were your family? What would you do? You know, this made me think of, like, um, bank heist stories. You know, all of them, like, people don't just go out robbing and stealing and all this stuff for nothing. People are trying to just get by for basic survival. On the radio, and feel like they gotta go out and take it versus go work for it, knowing working for it, you're not even gonna have enough to save. My goal was to buy a house. I can't even do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So should I go out and start just taking what I want? No, I want to do it the right way. Well, now you opened yourself up on that one because you know my next question: What is the right way? Right, we, we've been taught for we've been we've been taught for years to get up, okay. be a good kid, go to school, get a job, work thirty years, get a watch, and, and retire. Does that to, does that work anymore? Mike, I don't. I'm going to. Okay, what guys? One mic at a time, please. We are recording live, and we're on a uh, syndication. I'm, 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 I'm aware that I'm recording live, but um, doing the major thing. I'm not. All right. Um, let me answer that question, uh, Robert. Ask me that question. Can you repeat it again? What do we do? What do we do, Derek? What do we do now that we've seen the other side and we've seen the fact that you can go to work and you're only going to bring in five hundred dollars a week, but yet during pandemic you're making a thousand, and now you're busting your can. And as my dear friend. Sophia says, she says, well, Rob, I've got a car payment, I've got a house payment, or I've got a rent payment, food has gone up, what do I do? That's the question. Can you hear me? Okay. From my understanding is that you monitor the type of family that I live with. We have family in Florida, and they went through that little hurricane or whatever. But we also have other places that they can go, like right, other houses, and they can get in contact with like other jobs, other resources to make. So that's how we have been monetizing in my family. 
Okay, patience, no. patience. Bear with me a second. I'm a very direct person, and what you said, you were kind of in the ozone for a second. I want you to repeat that because what you said is very important. Would you mind, my dear, repeating what you just said? Because it, it it's going to apply to most of the conversation this evening. Okay. Thank you. I have family that was in a storm in Florida when this happened. So we have storms like that. Our family moved to different places in different states and different cities. And we help each other and we monetize with them. And we help them do a place to stay or they stay with us and we help them get done. That's right. So that's the type of family that I grew up in and that's my understanding to making money. It takes money to make money. Or it takes a great mind to understand what it takes to use money to make money. Ah, uh, you know, when I hear what you say, patience, it sounds like you've been extremely blessed. You've been blessed with a family that stood up, took a position and said, you know what? We're going to get through this together as one. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you believe there's possibility that there are other families that maybe were self-centered and not thinking about their loved ones or they were holding grudges from the past or living in fear of stepping up and they're still having problems because they didn't come they didn't step up right they didn't step up what what Absolutely. what do you say to those people that's um like a hindrance it's a hindrance on the person that's actually stopping the person from being blessed and the person has to be blessed. So like with that, like you can you can't move forward if you keep dwelling on the past. That's why we have a real view mirror. That real view mirror in the car is the that's the back. So when we're driving, we're going forward. Ah, beautiful. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, right? What, what do you feel that you gathering by, you know, just being in a room with us, just chilling with us and hanging with us? And um, um, do you feel like you just, you know, um, are you hanging with us just to hang with us or you are gathering information? Oh, I think I'm always gathering information. I'm an information obsessive person. 24 hours a day, all the purpose of life, write this down, the purpose of life is to learn. The purpose of life is to learn. If you ever come to a point where you feel that you already know everything about everything, then you need to have a talk with yourself. How do you learn? How do you endure in a relationship or how do you create a relationship? Through one word, love. Let me say that again. Love will conquer all. By living the spirit of love and by giving of yourself and giving of your time and not saying what's in it for me, you're rewarded by Heavenly Father. Now, in disclosure, I am Mormon. I am LDS. And I believe that we do have a Heavenly Father, and I do believe that He watches down on us. I do believe that there are people who have been put on this earth to be able to help us and show us and guide us and give us opportunities that we didn't know we even had. I also believe that we have opportunities that people put us in places and in rooms and areas where we had no idea what we were getting into. But once we opened our eyes and looked around, we were like, oh my gosh, look at the change this is going to have on me for my life. Do you guys follow that? For this is not a typical room. You know, Robert, you know, you know, you know I know. Oh, I know, Derek. But this it's is totally, this is totally a different room. And um, I want to open up on something like this. Let's, let's get a little deeper than this. Huh? All right. Um, for everybody in this room, 
I think everybody in this room ought to share it is what I think everybody people ought to do because the question you need to ask yourself, guys, and excuse me, excuse me, excuse me for interrupting, Derek. I just think that do your friends deserve to hear what we're talking about? If they don't, well, then just don't do that. We don't get any points for showing up. I don't get a paycheck for showing up. I don't get a paycheck for sharing the room. But you know what? There are people that are right now on the verge of suicide. They're on the verge of losing everything they have. They're on the verge of, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. They're on the verge of losing their kids. They're in the middle of a child support battle or a child custody issue. Those are the people that we want to talk to and that we can change their lives. Somebody asked me, what are you here for, Rob? What do you do? That's what we do. We create chaos like nothing, like you've never seen. And we, for our clients, win. And I say chaos in a positive way because we make sure that the world hears your voice. The world listens to what you have to say and you are not put to the side and told it's not your turn to speak. And with deference, I will listen to what happened to you in the past and I've heard every possible scenario that could happen. But the past is the past. We live in three areas. The past, the now, and the future. Where are you going to create the best results? And I have had people go at me for hours over that one comment. Oh, but I do understand. I do understand. However, just as patient said, to have a family that's going to be there for you when your house gets blown up, what's that worth? What's that worth? Guys, we're going to take 30 seconds for a station ID. We'll be right back. Stand by. You're now listening to the world famous Change Your Mind. Change Your Mind. Change Your Life. Change Your Life. Podcast. Broadcasting worldwide with your host, Robert Paisola. Ladies and gentlemen, give way for Robert Paisola. Broadcasting on 107.1 on the Man Cave Podcasting Network and beaming worldwide on the Spectavision Satellite Radio Network live from Las Vegas. Today's episode is brought to you by Mercedes Benz, featuring sleek luxury and pure elegance. Visit your local Mercedes Benz dealer today. Day and take advantage of exceptional deals for 2022. Bringing you the top news and guests from around the globe on finance, credit, life, or just how to fix that dent in your pocketbook from COVID-19. It's Robert Paisola. All right, and we are back now. Guys, tonight we're in Honolulu, Hawaii. Tomorrow I will be back in Las Vegas, and then I'll be in Salt Lake City, and then I'll be doing a seminar in New York City next week. So it's a pleasure to be here in this special, special room, the Fam Bam Club, and I'm excited to be here and to be able to assist anything that you have, anything going forward. And I am Robert Paisola, the CEO and President of Western Capital. All you have to do is click on the link above, and that will give you information on how to reach out to any of our people. So the question is now back to us. What do we do to create a reality that is something that we are so enriched that we love. What do we do to create relationships with people that are real? Not 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 fake. Real. Go ahead. Is there anybody in the fan band right now that would like to answer this question? Because I would do it, but uh, it would be nice if somebody else wanted to do it. Come on, y'all. Don't be scared. I would like to respond to that, but I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm back at work. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. So for me personally, friends is the one thing I've been looking for. And not, you know, just friends that want to sit around and gossip and BS and always want to hang out and all that. No, I want some friends that want to elevate one another. You know, how can we get to the next level, our higher self? And it seemed like everybody dealing with so much mental health issues. I don't think no one is thinking like that, except for the few people who are thinking like that. So, I don't know. I feel like a lot of us need more help than anything mentally first. And I feel like after that, everything else 
will fall into the best. Mental health. Did you realize that over 50% of our mental health staff in the United States, and also if you're in Europe at the NHS, has quit? Did you realize that doctors and nurses are now saying, that's it, I'm done? Doctors and nurses. Nurses who get paid over a over a hundred thousand dollars right now, they're getting paid to be traveling nurses, and they quit because the human body is only meant to stretch so far. True or false? The answer is true because you have to be willing and able because it's not about the money all the time, right? Yes, we work because we have to have money to take care of our family, and on and on and on. But if you're miserable, wow. Look at the education loss of people that because, of, because of what's gone on recently. Look at the number of people that we're going to lose out of the workforce. And they're trying to get them back. But will they? What do you think? Um... Let me just say this. You know, I'm very pessimistic about how you know our, our government run things. You have to be. If you just run the status quo, what you're being told on a day to day basis, you are a very gullible individual. And I might as well just give you a box filled with bricks and tell you it's like uh, uh, some beat by Dre. Uh, a whole stack of it. Dumbass individual. See, what we have to understand is we, we need to start educating ourselves. And um, for real, for real, this is, this is uh, a must because they are preying on our downfall of being ignorant. They are preying on the fact that we don't understand logic and we don't understand, you know, what's written right in plain sight, you know, laws, legalities. If you don't understand that, then you are a lost cause. I can't rock with you because you know what? You are going to be in opposition to me because I understand, you know, how these laws are written and, you know, how many of us don't understand how these laws are written because we don't read just literal news, just the, just the average everyday news. How are you going to sit up there and just tell me now you understand how these laws are written? I know you ain't paying no time or attention to it. And you, you're doing your people a disservice for that. But you know, at the same time, just for anybody that's listening to me right now, do yourself a service. Get yourself in them books. Understand laws. Understand how religion has been, you know, presented to us to be the end or be all when it's not. Go a little deeper than that. And if you still prescribe to that, then it's cool. It's all right. But don't don't be trying to enforce things on other people that they don't need. And that's the one thing I will say, just, you know, we are supposed to be a land of the free. Well, how are we being free now if we're being shackled to start to say, well, we need to identify as this and identify as that, and you need to, you know, validate this and validate that. Like, now my freedom of speech is being shackled. But uh, I let my plan right there. Um, I would love to take any questions if anybody has any. Josh, welcome to the room. Rob Pizzillo. What are you thinking, Josh? Are you there, Josh? Teddy, welcome to the room. Rob Pizzillo. What are you thinking? Trevon, welcome to the room, Rob Paisola. How you doing? 
So look what oh. ju look what just happened. Let me spend a second and explain what I just saw. People love to ride the wave. They love to hear, but sometimes they just want to sit back and not participate. And that's okay. Because they, in their own way, have the way of dealing with whatever they're hearing. They're, they're taking it in. But you know what the interesting thing is, my friends? We deal with very passionate subjects here. This is not a subject of something that's just a casual discussion. This whole topic should just enmesh you with energy. Your hands should be sweating right now. Because you're hearing something that you haven't heard before. What do I need to do to get you to tell me what's on your mind? You're not going to be challenged. We're not here to challenge you. There is no right and there is no wrong. We just want to see if you're participating in the game we call life. You know what? I, I, I think a lot of some people are just skeptical. And, you know, it's okay. I understand. See, I'm one of those people, I, I don't mind speaking. I don't have an issue saying anything in public uh, amongst anybody. I wouldn't be the person that I am, and um, I wouldn't be the king that I am. I feel like I always need to put myself in a position to be able to speak on behalf of my people. For so long, uh, my people have been treated like we are unequal, like we don't have a voice in this society. You know, but my community has stand strong, I mean, stand strong for a long time. And, um, you know, for a person like me, I have to stand on my tent and stand on this foundation as a person of color, I have to stand on this foundation forever, and I will. And to be able just to be on a platform that you are providing, to where I can talk to many different, you know, different types of people, different demographics of people. I appreciate that because, you know, that goes to show, you know, everybody can work on a certain level with each other. It's just, are you willing to work with one another? Are you just going to hold all these wounds, all this pent up animosity and anger that's going to keep us being strangers? Mm. And that's never going to benefit neither side. So I'm going to uh, mute my mic with that. I hope everybody understood what I just said right there. Peace. Now it's time for comments. Who understood what he just said and has a comment? Anyone? You know, it's interesting. You know what? I'll, I'll say this. It's going to um, take for a shift in everybody's consciousness. To, like Robert said, choose love over everything. And until we choose love over everything, I feel nothing will change. Everybody want to be on top, have power, the most money and all that. But you get all that and then what? Some millionaires are more miserable than people who have nothing. Some people who have nothing are more happier than people who have everything. So that should tell us something right there. Like, come on. We didn't talk enough. It, it's really time for us to stop talking, come up with a plan, and start doing some stuff. And I said this to you, I think Saturday, Garrett, but it, it, we didn't talk enough. It's for millennials. We've been talking. Like, who's really out here making a move to, to do something different? And I feel like with all these laws and statutes and stipulations and rules and regulations and stuff like that, all that should be revived, not so much a done away with, but revised for the greater good of everybody, not just a certain group of people. That's just how I feel about it. Wow. Did you guys hear what she just said? 
Let me see if it's not Robert A. Stupid. I'm here. I said, I said, wow. Did you hear what you just said? Mm-hmm. Wow. How do we respond to that, guys? She made some very valid points. Oh, welcome to the fan now. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, let me do it like this real quick, Robert. Uh, we are, right now, Robert is really, you know, talking to us in real time on his show. So, uh, Shell, if you want to speak, um, you can go ahead and speak. If you just want to chill, go ahead and chill. I just don't have a problem. You know, we're talking, so. The floor is open to anybody that wants to talk. Robert, if you want to go ahead and set it off, uh, I'll go ahead, my man. I'm sorry. No problem. Guys, welcome to the show. This is the... I'll say this. You know what your brain needs? Super duper great joy, right? If literally, literally, and I mean literally, everybody comes together for one, for the greater good of everybody and not just themselves, for the greater good of everybody that lives on this planet, and not just for your family or a certain group of people. Give everybody, and I mean everybody, the same opportunity. Give everybody that same voice. Let everybody stand out and be who they want to be. Let people just make a difference. Let people make mistakes. That's how we learn, through mistakes. Let people fail. And, I mean... <laughs> Let's come together. I think that's what it's about. Let's come together. Unify and heal. You know, I absolutely love what you just said. Let people make mistakes. Let people fail. At what point did we as a society decide that everybody had to be perfect and live up to some Instagram life? You see... No matter what, I don't care who you are, you've been through something and it's been difficult in your life. And some people hide those things and they don't want to talk about it because it might make them look bad or they don't want to deal with it. I, I, I get that. I get that. But what if you could remove that sandbag off your back that you've been carrying around for years and really, really, really dig deep and understand what it is that you're dealing with and let the experts help you or assist you. You know, I've been doing a lot of shadow work and I had to ask myself a number of questions because, you know, to get to the point, I couldn't understand why my life was going the way it was and why I would start and quit stuff and all this stuff. So I had to do some real, real shadow work and reflecting and why do I move the way I do? And it went all the way back to childhood, what I was told, what I was taught. You know, coming up in the 80s, the crack baby era as they would call it in my time frame you know i didn't grow up with my parents and i keep telling them, i think that's good because imagine if you would have grew up with your parents you probably would have been worse off than what you are now you know my parents was added thugging and drugging killing robbing and stealing. <laughs> you know I, I come from that and growing up with elders not so much of motivating you, but turning you down, um, taking your voice away, letting you know, because your parents ain't nothing, you ain't going to be nothing. You know, my self-esteem was shot early. You know, the ages of 8 to 13, was, I keep saying, was the worst years of my life. You know, even before that, I had some experiences. So I feel like a lot of stuff we dealt with as children 
and never talked about, never healed from, you know? That's why some of us adults act the way we do and don't know why. We are really dealing with some long generational sins of a father going seven generations deep type of stuff. And I feel like this is the time that we all should come together, sit down, unify, heal, and come up and create a new way of living for everybody that we all can agree to. And not know you got to do it like this or it has to look like this. No, it don't. It can look how it's whatever you want to look. You know, you can be whatever you want to be. And Sophia, what I hear you saying is so magical. You don't have to follow the sins of the fathers. You don't have to follow what you've been raised in, right? You have the ability and God's given us the gift to create whatever it is that we create and want for ourselves and our families. And just that knowledge, just that knowledge of knowing that we are that humanly powerful, that we can create whatever it is that we choose... Praise God. Just to know that. And you know what? I know we've all been through stuff. And you've referenced it. But like you're saying. You said seven generations. Isn't it about time where that's enough? We don't need to go to eight or nine or ten, do we? Wow. Exactly my point. It is time that we like, you know, all of us just look for a second and ask ourselves, is this way working? Because it's not, it hasn't been working since the beginning of the beginning. <laughs> like, come on. You need to change, create a new way. I'm telling you, if not, I feel like all of us going to be extinct. If we keep going the way we're going, we're going to be extinct. Forget God coming in. And all this destroy the world type of thing. No, us humans are going to destroy the world. How about that? And nothing is going to happen, but it's going to start over and do it all over again. So why even let it get to that point of, like, change your consciousness. That's the start. Change your mind. Change your heart. That's the start. I'm telling you, two people change their mind and heart, it's going to forever be like this. It's, we cannot control other people. People is really going to have to make the decision and choose love over everything. Just choose love. No matter what, I love you. No matter what, I love you. That's unconditional love. People out here loving with conditions. You know, and there's no unconditional love. It's conditional love. You know what's interesting when you say that is, is, is even today I've had people say, Okay. Well, oh. I'm about to switch it up a little bit okay. when I speak. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. I've learned that with certain things that we need to do, we need to monetize on things that we like, like a collection of things. And I have a few individuals here that they collect certain things and they like it, like my son. I collect um, clothing, um, stuff that um, actually keeps people in school. So I have a school teacher energy. I have a collection of audio books and physical books that I like. My friend Derek here has an actual collection of individuals that he like to go to to get food, different restaurants. Um, my friend Teddy here has a collection of cars that he like. Um, my friend Anita here has a great collection of friends, well-rounded friends. So what I've learned that if you monetize all things that you like to do. You can go further in life because if you like to do something, whether you're upset about it, whether you're happy about it, you're having a good day, bad day or whatever, you're going to do that naturally. And that's what's going to push you full. That's what I've learned about life. It's about the power of the subconscious mind. You're doing something without even thinking that you're doing it. You're still monetizing. So you're building up your own personal resume by just um, like you might go out and be like, okay, I'm at the store and you may see a perfume bottle. I say instance for a female. Oh, she likes perfume. I have, you know, a collection of perfume bottles. So for me, 
that's what I do. I try to stick to things that make me happy. And those things that make me happy, that's how I learn how to monetize some things. I think we just changed the definition of monetization, guys. Monetization doesn't necessarily have to be money, does it? That's an interesting concept. Absolutely true. true. Absolutely true. I, honestly, if you, if you really think about what she just said right there, you know, people think, you know, monetize, monetize, you're thinking just more of a, like, getting a, a, a paycheck. Sometimes monetizing is, like, getting those relationships and those vibes with people that you would never get in any other aspect of life. So when you run across those people, you are monetizing because you are benefiting on a, on a, on a deeper level because you are talking to this person on a physical level. But when you really bond with a person, it's really on a spiritual level. And that's when it becomes different. And you know what I find interesting, uh, Derek? Did you, notice, did you notice when she was talking, she went through and she mentioned specific people in our room and her intimate relationship with them and what they bring to the table. How many Absolutely. times How many times have you been in a clubhouse room where someone has said, hey, I love you because of this, 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 and this. And for instance, Anita did this, Rob did this, Teddy did this, Bouge, Derek did this. Wow. You know, okay. what, what, that shows Welcome that... Welcome to the fan band. Well, Welcome well, well it shows... Fam. Sure, because it shows that people are participating in life. What an interesting concept to participate and to be part of and the solution for others. Because, as she said, it's not just about financial. It's about the whole package, right? And as you said, welcome to the fan family. That's exactly right. That's what this room represents. That's the magic. But I in my entire year of being on this platform, have never heard anybody be so succinct and say such a great, great compliment to fellow members because they know and they listen to everybody's issue. They know exactly what they bring to the table and they, 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 they validate them and they bring them forward. Do you guys know the most important word a person can hear? What is the most important word, phrase, a person can hear? I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I love you and your name. I'm... Your name. Oh. Ah, Anita D. I love you. You are amazing. The thought that I say Anita D. means that I'm not just talking to anybody. I'm talking directly to her, and I'm talking to her spirit. That can go deep, really deep, real fast. But isn't it amazing when somebody says your name? <laughs> Fan band, we just learned something right there. Yeah, we're living it every moment. Man, you guys are my best friends. Like, I really love y'all. Let me just say this, uh, man. Shout out to my man Robert, number one. Um, you know, just for you, just to come in the fan band and and just to understand, you know, you know how we like it, man. We are really a cool laid back type of club uh, we're not like these other ones we're not trying to have beef with nobody we just in here chilling and um you know we are family but if you really disrespect us and if it comes to that point that's where the band comes in but we're not trying to we're not trying to use that like that you know if that makes sense uh, we like to have more intellectual conversations and um we're not trying to have no beef with nobody. And um, just by you coming in here and talking to us and, you know, we have an earlier conversation in, in two dope different rooms. I appreciate you, my man. And um, you are always welcome to the family. All I can say is I'm extremely humbled, Derek. I really am. And I'm I'm happy that in such a short period of time we've been able to establish the relationship that is true, that it's not based on BS or based on what society says you must do, but it's based on reality and love and helping each other and those type of things. Things that sometimes are uncomfortable, you know? But 
the best part about it is I think what we've just done tonight in this 59 seconds that we've been talking, 59 minutes we've been talking, is we've established the baseline for what the Fam Bam Club is. What is the baseline for what the Fam Bam Club will be? So to my listeners around the world, if you're anywhere in Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa, use your prefix to contact us for the USA toll free, or excuse me, uh, at 702-219-3624. If you want to reach out to myself, you can simply send an email to Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, at W-C-I Live. Robert at WCI Live. My profile information is above. All you got to do is click on that and you can follow on all the different platforms as many of you have been doing. And just know that the reason I do this is because I care. And I know that's hard to believe sometimes because everybody has always a secondary, uh, everybody believes everybody has a secondary emotion or a secondary reason. But there'll, there'll come a time when you'll be like, wait a second, I remember that guy. What was his name? And what can, this, he would be perfect to help me or work with me on this. It happens by simply being complete, truly authentic, and as you come with love. When I talked to Derek today, I was impressed. I was like, Derek, man, we've been following each other for a long time. He says, yeah. He says, we got to do a podcast together, Rob. And I'm like, okay. This is the result. And notice the feeling you're feeling right now. Notice the feeling and notice what you've created in your world. You've created this, not me. You've created the basis for which to move your life in the direction that you want it to be. And I want to tell you that I will support you 100%. If you send an email and in the subject line and you play this back or you hear this in the subject line and you say that you heard me, I will be glad to talk to you and get with you. No problem, no problem, no problem. It's just amazing sometimes when you know that there's people on your side. So, with that, I want to play one song that I think sums this whole thing up. And then we'll close out on our live broadcast. Yeah. And uh, just kind of stand wait, by. Wait, wait. Go, go ahead, Derek. Before you uh, play this song, I just want to say this real quick. Yep. Um, shout out to uh, Robert. You know, for coming in the fan band, number one, just and hanging out with us and actually picking us on his show. And um, I hope we represent it correctly. And um, I hope this is not, you know, the end all be all to what we do in future endeavors. But uh, thank you, Robert, for showing up. And thank you for everybody in the fan band for showing up. Sophia, Patience, Anita, my brother Teddy, Bougie, and Rosalind that just came up. So uh, I appreciate all of y'all. All of y'all have something to offer to the fan band, and I love you all. And um, thank you, Robert, for allowing them to, uh, you know, allow their personality to be shown to the people. So, uh, with that being said, I mean, when Mike then you got it right.
friends, that song is on the Love Can Build a Bridge album by the Judds. Labels RCA Nashville out of Curb. John Barlow Jarvis is a songwriter. Naomi Judd and Paul Overstreet. Producers Bent Mayhair. This is Robert Paisola with the West 1-1 Radio Network. We are pleased to be a guest this evening on the FamBamClub.com or the FamBam Club on Clubhouse. We appreciate all the people who have stopped by tonight and all the guests and all of our people around the world. One thing I want you to know is you are loved. And if you need to reach out to us, you have our information. We appreciate you like nothing else. God bless you, my friends. Until next week, this is Robert Paisola with the Western Capital Foundation. You've been listening to the world famous Change Your Mind, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life podcast. We hope we've helped you get on the road to do both. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on Facebook, Clubhouse, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Podcasting, Google Podcasting, and Instagram at Rob underscore Pisola. Reach out to us by phone at 1-800-373-8913 and send your questions or comments to VIP at westerncapitalmedia.com. Until next time, this has been the world-famous Change Your Mind, Change Your Life podcast.